Hey, welcome back. I'm Chris, and today we're gonna replace a laundry sink pump. Let's do this real quick. Now, this pump is used when your waste is higher than your actual drain in your laundry sink. You need a pump underneath the sink to pump the water out, up, and into your waste. So, the pump failed. We're gonna replace it today in, well, a couple easy steps. It should be pretty simple, but for me, plumbing always gets confusing between this side, that side, this thread size, that thread size, and, and everything else. Like, I never learned plumbing. The, so I should start off by saying that I'm not a plumber, but I'm a, you know, do-it-yourself kind of guy. Oh yeah, I'm back here again to tackle this thing and hopefully get it done right without it leaking. So we'll see. Now, obviously, first you have to remove the pump. Uh, check back at my other video the other day uh, when I screwed up and made a mess, uh, but that's when I removed the pump. So today we're really just refitting everything and putting everything together the right way. So you attach the pump to the bottom of the sink in whatever way you need to for your specific application. And then you're gonna run some pipe to fit it to your existing plumbing. And however you need to do that, you need to route it the way you need to route it. But I'm gonna go from the pump to the ball valve to the check valve. Now the ball valve is really gonna control the rate of flow of water leaving the pump. You wanna match the flow of water coming into the sink to the water flowing out so that the pump isn't cycling like crazy to where it's going on and off, on and off, on and off. You want the water to come into the sink, the pump to turn on, shoot the water out at a consistent rate to where the sink level is gonna drop and once it gets down to the pump, the pump shuts off. It just runs once, that's it. It's gonna save the life of your pump. Now the check valve is there to prevent water that's up in the pipe. This is your check valve. This is really to stop the water from back flowing into your pump and up into your sink and it kind of stops sewer gases and stuff too. And the water's gonna flow one way. Usually it's marked. So you wanna be mindful of that so you don't put it in backwards. Yeah. So make sure you install the check valve the correct way. Usually the flapper, you know, flaps like this and where it closes, that's where the pressure is going to go to close the check valve. Real quick tip, if you're going to cut PVC with a hacksaw, you might want to use that wooden miter box that you probably don't use that often to get a nice straight cut. It's just a thought, just an idea. Uh, I should listen to my own thoughts and ideas because I forgot mine. It's sitting at home. Would have been nice to use now. Oh well. And then I always clean up the edges as well because you don't want any of the little bits of plastic getting in your glue joint and stuff like that and screwing anything up and well creating a leak before you go ahead and use a pvc glue it's a good idea once you have all your pieces cut to go ahead and dry fit everything and then you can take a magic marker i think it's called like a witness mark and kind of just mark the two pieces so that when you match them up again you have a reference line to match everything up so you have the exact angles you need corresponding to when you dry fit everything. Now when you're using the PVC glue, definitely, you know, turn it around and read the instructions on the back because your application might be slightly different than mine. But for the most part, you want to use the cleaner or the solvent first to really prime everything on there. And then you want to put a generous amount of glue onto the piece itself. It's called the male piece. And then on the female piece, you just want to put a thin layer of glue. And you want to marry those two together. You want to put them together and you want to hold them for a little bit because that pipe, that male piece, they kind, of, they kind of want to push away. They kind of want to just back out. So you want to hold them together, uh, maybe for like a 30 second count to a minute count or so, just enough to where it's not going to back out on you and screw your plumbing up. You want it to set up. Now it sets up pretty quickly to where you can let go of it and you don't have to worry about holding it. And then it's made for the one I was using, it was about a two hour time difference to cure. So you can't really use anything for those two hours or so. So, you know, let it do its job to where it's not gonna fail on you. Now, as far as putting thread tape on your threads, I was always taught to go clockwise. I mean, it's gonna seem kinda opposite when I'm doing it here because of just the angle, but clockwise, because then when you're threading it, it's not like taking the tape off, it's going with the tape so that, you know, I actually get a seal and you don't get leaks and Somehow this was my problem yesterday. I put thread tape on and then going to the existing plumbing, maybe there was a piece of crud somewhere in the th threads and it, it, it was leaking at the threads. But because of how I put the plumbing together, there was no way I could tighten it anymore. And I thought I had it as tight as I could get it. 
So today I'm doing things a little bit different so I could still take everything off if I need to and tighten up certain spots that obviously go to the threads and go from there. That way if something leaks, I can adjust it, put more thread tape on or whatever I need to do. As far as gluing the joints, all that stuff was fine. And once you have everything buttoned up, tightened up and in place and it's you know been the two hours or whatever you need to have everything cure and harden and have all that glue dry so you have a nice watertight seal, it's time to test everything out. Now unfortunately this is at my mom's house so I wasn't able to test it out but I'm sure I'll get a phone call if it's leaking. So hopefully everything worked out for you, hopefully this video helped you and I think I've done enough rambling for today. So I'll see you on the next one. I think we pretty much covered everything. Uh, like I said, I'm not a plumber. I'm just a person like you trying to save a little money and, and learn something along the way. And th this isn't a main water supply or anything like that. So it shouldn't be too much of a headache. I mean, if it leaks, there should be a drain on your floor somewhere pretty close by to, well, you know, just make sure it doesn't leak. You know, test it out, definitely. I'll see you on the next one.